40th Dakar Rally reached the halfway stage as the Toyota Gazoo Racing South Africa team and the Peugeots resumed their rivalry in South America. The crews returned to racing after having enjoyed a race day in the Bolivian city of La Paz, something that was roundly welcomed by the drivers and navigators. Yes, yes, I want to sleep. I really want to sleep and the rest out. Now everything hurts and uh, I think also good for the mechanics to, uh, to uh, rebuild the car for the day after. And uh, I believe that when we had the marathon day, the mechanics have a uh, uh, rest day. But uh, no, for us, uh, it's a nice welcome uh, to have a uh, day like tomorrow. Yeah, I think it's a well-deserved rest for everybody. You know, obviously the boys are working hard today, but uh, yeah, it was a... A tough first week, uh, you know, lots of sand and uh, two very long days, the last two days, so I think everybody um, is deserving the rest day. Um, but, you know, having said that, there's uh, we've only done a third of the distance, so there's two thirds to go and uh, it's going to certainly be a very tough uh, second week. So with the competitors well rested, they then had to take on the dreaded marathon stage, a 425 kilometer journey to Uni, home of the Solar Uni, the biggest salt flat in the world. The day proved to be a very good one for the team and a disastrous one for Peugeot. Carlos Sainz finished the stage quickest with the Toyotas of Nasa Letia and Janil de Villiers behind him. More importantly, however, Stefan Pederhansel's hopes of a 14th Dakar title suffered a massive blow when he was hit by suspension failure, which left him stranded for an hour and 45 minutes. It means that Sainz is the new overall leader 1 hour, 11 minutes and 29 seconds ahead of Valatia, with Peter Hansel third and De Villiers fourth. It was a very difficult and tough stage, like a real Dakar stage again. Uh, I think it's the most difficult, I, uh, not this stage, but the most difficult Dakar I did in my life until now. So I'm really happy to finish today. And we lost a little bit of time, uh, fortunately, in the Camel Grass. We stay stuck for a few minutes, but at the end, it's still a good result. So. We are still happy. Completely different than Peru, but it was a really difficult stage with 50 to 70 kilometers of camel grass in between and very rough piss. Some fast parts, but even there you have had to be very careful for washouts from the rain of the last two days and very long water pedals, like 50 meters long in places. And it's amazing how our Hilux went through there and the um, car was running really nicely and, and Geneva was doing a good job. Navigation was perfect. He didn't do any mistakes. We lost a little bit of time at the last 100 kilometers um, compared to NASA, but so I think we finished second today, so we cannot ask for more. A lot more difficult than expected, especially the first 150 k's were really, really difficult. Soft sand and camel grass and, you know, really tricky. But um, yeah, we, we, we saw Stefan standing next to the road, apparently broke a suspension, and then I uh, saw Nasser uh, just stuck on a camel grass for a couple of minutes. Uh, I don't think he lost too much time. Um, and then uh, he caught me right at the end and then passed me, so we let him pass. But, you know, all in all a good day for, for us and uh, it just shows, you know, the Dakar is never over until you get to the finish. Um, it was also important to look after the car today because tomorrow is another 500 k's without service tonight. So, um, so far the car is good and we'll see, we'll see what happens tomorrow. Yeah, I feel very sorry for Stefan. He did a brilliant race until now, but it looks like he lost control in the water pedal and hit something with his car and ripped off the suspension. We lose, uh, we lose eight minutes, nine minutes in the stage because we stuck in the camel grass and after we have a flat tire, you know. But okay, we are quite happy to be here. And also just we lose from Carlos only one minute and 11 seconds, you know, with all this problem, you know, where we, we lose in camel grass. Yeah, we are quite happy to be here. <laughs> a new day, a new challenge. Oh, it was uh, not really our day uh, because at the start of the stage, uh, you see how the cars are. My wipers didn't work, or don't work anymore. Uh, after 30 k's, uh, it was a little ditch with mud in it, and I could not see it because my window was fully blocked of uh, everything, and uh, I get stuck in it. I, I knew that uh, Lucio was behind me uh, three minutes, and uh, I get out of the car uh, till my knees in the mud, get uh, the towing rope at the front of the car, wait for uh, Lucio. Many thanks for Lucio, really many thanks because he did a really great job, he stopped. We hooked on uh, his car, he, pull, uh, he pulled me out and uh, yeah, then we drive uh, the next 320 k's and uh, without wipers, without water, it was really difficult. 
With the marathon stage in full effect, the drivers and their navigators were without support crew in a uni, meaning they'd have to fix any damage to their vehicles themselves. No, I mean, there's actually nothing wrong, so we're going to change the tires and, uh, you know, just check everything, but, um, you know, don't uh, try and fix something that's not broken, so nothing's wrong, so we, we, we're ready for the five minute case tomorrow. So, we don't have too much uh, job, but uh, we will check everything, of course, but we we don't eat anything, uh, the car is still uh, running well, so we don't have any problem, it will be good for us tonight. Yeah, uh, now we must do uh, something by ourselves, but okay, uh uh, we have uh, the whole night to do it and uh, tomorrow a new day. Next up, stage 8. The second part of the marathon stage and the longest special stage that competitors will encounter at the Dakar Rally 2018. They'll have to tackle almost 500 kilometers of racing, including reaching altitudes of up to 3,500 meters. Uh, it will be more or less like the last 200k of today. So some canyon, some piste and uh, some difficult uh, Rio to cross. Uh, I hope that we will have the, the same uh, weather as now. I, I mean no, no water in the, on the way and should be good. I expect some difficult um, navigation in the beginning and soft dunes and stuff like that in the beginning. And after that we will climb the high mountains up to 4,700 meters I guess. So it's definitely like today a buggy stage there's no chance that we could beat um, Carlos and his lion but um, I mean you never know what will happen and we are the lion hunters and so far we are not too bad I mean we got three from four seven days left so maybe we got the last one as well competitors now find themselves at altitude in Bolivia the country nicknamed the rooftop of the world However, the 2018 Dakar Rally began in Peru, with the first six stages of the world's toughest race taking place in the country. What were some of the highlights of the land of the Incas? Oh, I think uh, Peru was uh, very good. Uh, the highlight was, of course, uh, the dunes and uh, that we make uh, not many uh, mistakes, uh, almost no mistakes. Peru was really a uh, difficult uh, stage, you know, with a lot of uh, dunes, a lot of navigation. This was not easy, but okay, uh, it's, uh, this is uh, the spirit of Dakar. Well, I think some of the performances by all three of our drivers, you know, we, we could have won, we did win two out of the first three days of the stages, we could have won more stages, the performance was there, the beach drag race, from a technical point of view, told us quite a lot, some planning for the future there, so uh, I think we're pretty happy with the performance there. Peru, the highlights. Uh, I really like the coastline, that was quite beautiful with the, uh, the big cliffs along the coastline, that was quite amazing, I haven't seen anything like that. So. Uh, it was of course the sand, I mean, we played um, four or five days, five days in the sand in Peru, it was really tough um, dune stages and, and that was a highlight, it was a lot of sand that was a Dakar missing the last two, three years. Um, this year's Dakar is really a, a tough Dakar um, like it has to be. Every day uh, we were uh, progressing. Day two was already difficult, day three more difficult, day four one more step and day five. Day five was really something. We saw that on day five uh, with the really, really the most difficult dunes that I've ever driven in. So um, yeah, I mean that is what we remember Peru for, but it was nice to be there again, you know, it's a great challenge and uh, we managed to get through, uh, although, you know, not completely unscathed, we lost more than an hour there getting stuck, but uh, anyway, you know. I think a lot of other guys were also stuck. The only guy that wasn't stuck, uh, I think, was Stefan uh, Pirenzel. So uh, maybe his uh, time's coming now in Argentina. 